Hi there, and welcome back to English for Professionals. I'm Derek, and I'm here with another short lesson for you busy people. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to prepare a self-evaluation, also called a self-appraisal. So this lesson should be interesting and helpful for anybody who's preparing for a performance review, a job interview, or any other situation where you need to talk about your strengths, weaknesses, achievements, and goals. Are you ready? Let's get started. So we're going to do three things in this lesson. First of all, we'll look at what a self-evaluation is and what's included. Then I'll give you some general tips. And in the main part of the lesson, I'll share lots of useful vocabulary, phrases, and examples to help you when preparing your self-evaluation. The tips, ideas, and language presented in this lesson are things I have learned from researching this topic and from my experience as a professional English coach. Every company is different and will have their own approach when it comes to evaluations and performance reviews. Check with your manager or human resources department to find out exactly what is expected so you know what to include if you are asked to prepare a self-evaluation. Basically, it's a document where you describe your professional progress for a specific period. A lot of companies ask their employees to hand in a self-evaluation as part of a performance review. Some companies do one performance review per year, whereas others do them more regularly, up to four times a year. In your evaluation, you should describe your general performance and accomplishments during the period. Your accomplishments are the things you have achieved successfully. You should also mention areas you've improved on as well as situations where you failed to reach a specific standard. These are called shortcomings. Your thoughts on your professional development and which direction you see your career going in should also be in there. It's also a good idea to mention your personal values and how they align with the company values. Self-evaluations help you to reflect on your performance and to think critically about which parts of your job you can improve on and how you can develop. A well-prepared and honest self-evaluation can lead to a productive performance review and it could also lead to interesting career opportunities. Keep a record of your accomplishments throughout the period. This will give you a head start in your preparation and having hard facts and figures to back up your successes is a big help. Show off your best work. Focus on the highlights you are most proud of. Be honest and critical. Recognizing your weaknesses and shortcomings shows that you're willing to grow and learn. Use positive language when describing challenges or struggles you've had. Keep the focus on you. If you've had any problems with colleagues, you can talk about that in a separate meeting. The focus should be on you, your role, and what the company expects from you in that role. And finally, always be professional. And now it's time to focus on the vocabulary and phrases to use when preparing your self-evaluation. And we'll start off with general performance. I take the initiative on every project I am involved in and I often go out of my way to support less experienced team members. To take the initiative means to be the first one to do something, especially to solve a problem or control a situation. To go out of your way to do something means to try especially hard to do something good or helpful. I often go above and beyond my job description to ensure that my team exceeds targets and expectations. 
To go above and beyond something means to do more or better than would usually be expected. If you exceed targets and expectations, it means you achieve a better or higher result. Another phrase which is very similar to go above and beyond is to go the extra mile. For example, I often go the extra mile to ensure our customers are completely satisfied. And here are some other words to talk about performance and strengths. In British English, this word is pronounced thorough, and in American English, it's pronounced thorough. If you describe yourself as thorough, it means you do things very carefully and with great attention to detail. Decisive. This means that you can make decisions quickly and with confidence. Reliable. You do what you say you will do. You can be trusted to do your job well. Cope well under pressure. This means you can handle pressure well. And here's an important tip. When describing your performance and strengths, always give examples to support what you're saying. Excellent, and now let's take a look at some useful vocabulary and phrases for talking about your accomplishments. A very simple way to describe your accomplishments is over the last, and then include the time period, I have, and then describe the accomplishments and give examples. Over the last three months, I have demonstrated an excellent work ethic and found more efficient ways of doing our work. For example, during our busy period, I came in early and stayed late to make sure all of our orders were fulfilled and sent out to our customers on time. I also developed a new system which now helps us to keep track of incoming orders much more efficiently. All of this resulted in my team exceeding targets and increasing our customer satisfaction rating. I am extremely proud of what my team and I have achieved over the, I mentioned the time period, compared to the previous period we have, and then describe accomplishments and compare results. I am extremely proud of what my team and I have achieved over the last six months. Compared to the previous period, we have increased turnover by 8%. We also managed to reduce costs by 5%. It's also common to use not only sentences to highlight accomplishments. Not only did I meet my monthly goals, but I exceeded them by an average of 7%. Not only did I complete several projects ahead of schedule, I was also within budget on the majority. So most of the projects did not cost more than was planned. And one more example, not only did I successfully implement a new sales strategy, I also recruited two experienced sales managers from our biggest competitor. Great, now let's move on to talking about how you've improved. I have invested a significant amount of time working on, and then mentioned the area that needed improvement, and I am very happy to say that I have made very good progress. I still find it challenging to, and then mention the specific area which is still difficult, but I continue to work on that and feel that I have definitely turned a corner. I have invested a significant amount of time working on delegating tasks, and I'm very happy to say that I have made very good progress. I still find it challenging to pass on certain tasks, but I continue to work on that and feel that I have definitely turned a corner. To turn a corner means to start to improve after a difficult period. And now it's time to look at some vocabulary and phrases for talking about your shortcomings. Those situations where you failed to reach a specific standard. When talking about your shortcomings, remember to keep the language positive. Although or despite, then mention a positive aspect of your performance, 
and then mention one of your shortcomings. Although I have shown exceptional progress in providing a very high level of service to our clients since my last evaluation, there were some situations where my performance did not reach the required standard. Despite meeting my most important performance objectives during the past three months, I did experience some challenges. When using a verb after despite, it should be in the gerund or ing form. When you mention your shortcomings, you should also talk about what you plan to do to avoid these situations in the future. I have given a lot of consideration to the areas where I can improve and have come up with several ideas or several strategies. For example, I'm going to start delegating more tasks to my team so I have more time to focus on growing the business. Great, now let's move on to professional development. In terms of professional development, I feel that the next logical step for me is to, and then mention what you would like to do next in your career. In terms of professional development, I feel that the next logical step for me is to enter a management role. I have been consistently performing at a high level for the last two years and have developed very good leadership skills. In addition to this, I have excellent knowledge of how the business works and I am convinced I have what it takes to manage at this level. I am very keen to develop my, then mention the type of skill or skills, further as I know it will help me take my performance to the next level. There is a course starting in, mention the time period, and I believe it is the perfect opportunity for me to develop those skills and mention a benefit for the company. I am very keen to develop my leadership skills further as I know it will help me take my performance to the next level. There is a course starting in January and I believe it is the perfect opportunity for me to develop those skills and add value to the company. And one more example, I feel that this training can provide me with the best opportunity to grow and develop further and I'm hoping that it will be approved. So hoping that the company will allow you to take part in it and maybe even pay for it. I have set myself the following goals for the next six months and then provide a list of your goals. In order to grow and achieve a higher level of performance, I have set the following targets for myself and again provide a list of your goals. I am excited to start working on these new goals and I am convinced that I can achieve them successfully or that I can achieve them with a high degree of success. And finally, we look at some useful vocabulary and phrases for talking about personal and company values. The customer comes first. I have always been very customer oriented and I genuinely care about providing a high level of service and support to our customers. I have demonstrated this consistently and it is something that I am very proud of. Teamwork. I have been involved in team sports from a young age and as a result I place great value on the power of teamwork. The skills I have gained as a member of several different sports teams have also enabled me to build great teams here in our company. Being a member of a successful team gives me great job satisfaction and motivates me to consistently perform at a high level. So that brings us to the end of another lesson. I hope you liked it and I hope it will be helpful for any of you who are preparing a self-evaluation or for a job interview or any other situation where you need to talk about your strengths, weaknesses, achievements and so on. If you did like the lesson, hit the like button and share with your friends and colleagues. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already and join my email list. 
Every two weeks, I send out my free vocabulary email with additional business English, words from the news, and everyday English for you to learn. The link is in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you soon.